Go that way a little. Nope. We need wood. <laughs> That'll fix it. Jack it up, push it in the rest of the way. All right, so this is Brian's bug and uh, he'll be back in a few minutes, but he uh, never did any body work metal wise and done any kind of welding and uh, has asked me to give him a hand and I more than welcome to go do so. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to turn the camera on and uh, as I'm teaching him what to go and do that uh, you, know, you guys get to hang out and do the same. So he cut out one side of the floor and one heater channel in this and it is best to uh, clean up the edges and prep the pan. It's got weld through primer on there. We should be able to weld th right through those. The heater channel is just floating right now. This, this is what the heater channel is. Uh, rocker, but on a, a bug, it's called a heater channel. They are just bolted. The pan and the heater channel just kind of bolted together and the heater channel can kind of move around. It's just sitting there right now with the gasket in between for spacing. Uh, he should have welded a bar across the door before he cut it open, but did not. So we're going to work our way around that. Again, this is just going to be for fun, learning how to uh, weld and uh, glue old cars back together. So we're not looking for perfection. We're just looking for uh, enjoying ourselves, have a good time uh, working with rusty junk. Judging by the other side, you can kind of see how bad uh, the situation was. Nice battery. As we get a, uh, a minute to regroup, we'll get this all set up and uh, we'll start getting into it. Well, that was easy. We got Brian's bug up on the lift and had to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Got jack stains in the front. We got a little bridge crib of wood to grab the tunnel and then just the shims all the way up in the back to give us some distance between the floor pans and the body. It's really evenly set up. Again, I would have. Uh, tackle this a little bit differently but we're going to go deal with what we have to deal with we close both doors looking at the gap of the heater channels if you can follow that line up that space between the heater channel and the bottom of the door you can see that's roughly a half inch and it maintains all the way across the one on the other side that's floating is a little in too far and he's got it bolted to the pan so we're going to cut the pan loose from the front and see if we could slide it over a little bit get it centered to where we need it and then move on from there well the problem is right now i don't have a reference point where where things were where the heater channel was and all again i didn't take it apart not that it was much of a heater channel to begin with but i am just not familiar enough where the locations are that he's actually going to go grab his other red beetle which is nice and clean we're going to go use that for a visual for how far of a gap you have between the say the bottom of the door and the, the pan and you know how far in and out so i'm gonna wait for that to show up and then we can kind of move forward with uh i'm probably just gonna put a couple little uh, temporary bridges in different areas get the heater channel where we need it and then we'll weld in the floor after the floor is welded in we can come back and uh, reattach everything back down to the heater channel on this side all right so on this other car i just took a, a measure point i went from the top of the hinge to right here it was 23 inches so we jacked that up with a piece of wood so that dimension is correct and then over the top of the post we saw where the the post came down and meant the heater channel the post was out of here past the heater channel so that's exactly what i did there and just tapped a piece of wood in to shift it over and you can see how far the pan is off from its lip it's actually almost right off the lip altogether unfortunately but that's where it needs to go so i'm going to go just make a, a bridge probably in the wheel well uh, the tack going across to keep that point. Maybe we'll shift over to the rear, see where the rear is supposed to be. We'll find out where the heater channel needs to be. We'll do the same to the rear and then we can start getting into it. So I just reattached the wall uh, skin back down to the heater channel just so it'll maintain its location. We can get rid of the piece of wood in there and then uh, the floor. I'm going to shift over to the rear, figure out where that's supposed to be. Do that one. I'm going to go catch a measurement from the heater channel. We'll write it to the ring gutter. Let's see what that's supposed to be. We we'll call it right on 41. We'll go at 41. <laughs> so that's about where that needs to go for the heater channel. There's really nothing 
to attach the rear. So he's going to pull the rear tire off and we're going to make a patch from the back side. It needs to be done anyway. So we'll repair this. We'll attach the heater channel to that back wall and uh, we could start building off of there. Manual labor. A little more. All right, so I've got the heater channel pretty uh, fixed in its location, probably the best way to put it. I got a patch in the back holding the heater channel and then in the front. I just, where metal overlapped, I was able to go grab the front. But at least now that is stable. That looks a little better. Stable, it's not gonna move everything in its right location. You know, the walls are still floating and all. But compared to his other car, that looks pretty decent for its fixed location. I didn't want to have him, there it is. Didn't want to have him struggle trying to do all that while he's trying to learn on top of it. So I took over that aspect of it. But now we're gonna have him start making some patches and start welding them together. He's making his first ever patch panel. First ever paper dolls. Mm. <laughs> Load her up! <laughs> and, uh, just take your hand and, and like where that top scene is, yeah, make a dirt stain on it. And then cut that and leave uh, yeah, like pie base. There you go. Normally what I would do, we're not going to have you do it on this one just because it's going to get complicated. I would, on that right hand side, I would have made it so that it folded and made another lip so that we can grab that corner over here. I would have yeah. folded that and, and brought it in, but we're not going to do that for your first one just because okay. it's going to get too complicated. But we're going to go take that, we'll trace that on a piece of metal. Okay. You got it. I would, like if you have a straight edge, like that, yeah, you go. So you're already, you don't have to worry about cutting that one. Oh yeah. So just go right off of that corner. Okay. Is it weird to watch you people watch people use their right hand for writing? Yeah, right. And also, just mark, like, we'll call this one top, mm -hmm. and then slide it over and mark top on that one. So you, you, what is your top actually? As you, it looks like almost that's your fold, right? Yeah. That was the bottom edge. Yeah. All right. So that, like that, like that. Yeah. Yeah. So just write top on your on your uh, print, and then. Slide the metal back and do the same on that. Just so your orientation, mm -hmm. do the same on that. It's actually top it in, but yeah, that's, that's right. the top end. Yeah. There you go. Right. Yeah, that's how it's going to go in the car mm -hmm. pattern. So now take it, and I want you to put a mark there and there, roughly where those folds are. Sure. Chore and chore. You know that's how it's going to be sitting in the car just like that. We are going to need to be able to weld all the way around on those edges. And the bottom, I thought about doing plug welds, but we're probably just going to do the outer perimeter. So I want you, before we bend it, to go clean this edge up 
all the way around to clean metal. Okay. And when you do it, you always want to have the disc, the disc is spinning clockwise, you always want to be rolling off the edge. Try not to roll onto the edge, you always want to try to be off, off. That way it doesn't want to kick the metal out of your hand. So if you, if you have it, you know, like that, you hold it with the other hand and just kind of go around the edges, flip, the, rotate the metal again, go across the edge, go across the edge. Okay. And you can hang it off, hang it off of there too. There you go. Contact. Maybe. You got to pull that little goofy. You could hold it a little flatter so that you, you come in just a little bit more. Sure. There you go. There you got it. If you had a vice, you could just kind of stick it in the vice and bend it over, but we have this nice fancy uh, homemade bender. We're gonna go put a lip on it. You always want to be try to be center over. We went the right way, and that'll be your angle. Then we're just gonna go hammer that into position when it's in the car. Right, so that fits. It actually feels pretty good. Uh, the bottom, when you're feeling like this lip here, is it? Yeah. Does it feel like it kind of? So what I want you to do is take the Sharpie now yeah. and just run around the perimeter of that so we kind of know where you need to come back with a grinder and clean up edgewise. Oh, now I did it. Fat fingers. There you go. So now you're going to prep that surface. And again, be the same way. You want to make sure that you always, that if you can, you always want to try to be rolling away from the sharp edges. Mm -hmm. Go for it. Okay. And so you know where the metal is going to be. You want essentially like right below that line is where the weld is. So that's the cleanest part that you need to make. Okay. Back. You can come back with another tool, for like if there's an area we probably we didn't get, we can come in with a smaller setup, but you can do that top line now. Yep. And that's stuck. You can actually, like if this is going to be in your way, you can rotate this a little bit. This has drag on it, but you could grab that shield and, and bend it so it's not so much in your way. Okay. You can like turn this, like right now it's at, there you go. There you go. Gotcha. Because you know you're not going to be welding anything up there anyway, so there's no real sense to go chase that. Okay, uh, take a piece of metal, lie it back in there again. See how that looks. Seems like it's a little yeah, not too bad. A little bit 
I mean, we probably could have, when we made the pattern, this, this end probably could have dropped off a little bit. But that should be fine. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tune that up a little bit for you. That should be good. Um, what, but while this patch is here, if you go to put the next patch next to it, you're not going to be able to get the grinder in. So I'm going to have you clean up this surface a little bit. We're just going to kind of ballpark where it is. And now I want you to do the same up here so that uh, while the area is open, you can get in there. Something like that. All right, so you know in the car, this lip was a little tall and yeah. it, it, it's actually a little too proud. So just kind of come over to something that has a, a little bit of a radius to it. You just kind of come back and, and tap it down. If you, and you look, you can kind of see that you're, you're influencing it down. It's less here and it's more on that side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Just kind of roll it. It'll mm -hmm. move easier than you think, okay? What I'm gonna have you do is go back to the car, back and forth, fit that a couple of times. Yeah. When you find that you got what you want, then uh, we'll... you can also see if you want to influence that a little. You can come around this way, and see if you want to roll that lip. Which side is the one I needed more? This right here. This was less. That was more. This was more. So you can kind of flip it over too. And give it some of that. Okay. That works. For... Also. And it's a little bit more stable. So flip it over, there you go, and you could roll it. Yeah, you're just kind of like watching where that is, and yeah. but you're hitting here, this is your strong point. Yeah. It's not gonna defect that much, deflect that much, mm -hmm. but this lip should kind of move as you go around it. Okay. So what's your thoughts? I think it's pretty nice. Yeah, a little bit on that area. Well, you're gonna, like, as long as you can get, like, say, an attack here, mm -hmm. and then attack here, you can actually come back with a hammer, too, and, and do, like, fi fine tuning. But you want it, you know, fairly close. You Like, if you see an area that's a little defunct, like, I would just take it, even while it's here, just tap it a little bit right in this corner, because this corner's starting to roll. Yeah. So just give it a, a couple of taps right there to, to take a little bit of that roll out. Okay. Don't be afraid to use this, this part of the hammer so you can kind of concentrate if you want. That looks fine. Just, and just eyeball the rest of it. It looks pretty good to me though. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, that'll be your first patch. Cool. Uh, what I want you to do is right where this weld is, take a Sharpie and mark it. See how there's like a, a gap up in here? Mm -hmm. So if you grind some of this away, the, sh the piece can kind of go in a little bit more and we'll be able to Bridge a weld right up the side of that too. Okay, grab the sharpie. Yeah, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna hang off the bench, you're gonna take the flapper wheel, and, and you're just gonna come right in there and you're gonna sand away till basically you don't see that uh, black sharpie anymore. Okay. Just, you know, don't go overzealous, it'll, it'll go fairly quickly. Okay. Take a, a little bit more right off of that edge right there. Good. I just took that one more time. Like I said, normally we would we would have folded a corner around that, but this will work. That looks pretty good. Are you hanging up on a weld right there on the top? Does it have to come a hair higher or no? It's, that's, I think it's hitting the weld, right? Yeah, so so you're just gonna go give it a little bit more on the top of that. You're just yeah. gonna make that a little bit taller, and sure. then, then we're good. Okay. I'm gonna go grab a corner. I, I wanna go from basically like the middle, 
in the middle so that it doesn't walk away on you. Okay. That's it, that's pretty good. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to come back now and about an inch from each end, I'm going to throw another tack now that it's kind of supported. next to that weld if it's up a little bit now you can work off that weld I'm just talking rig flash and if it's moving around on you see if you can't get in there with your finger to go use it I use the, the heel of the hammer to help hold it down and into place Battery's flashing. Yeah, we get this up there. Looks like up there. See how that one's floating? Yeah. So I'm going to hold it against the wall. And once you get the tack on it, again, if, it, if it's sitting a little proud, you can tap on the flush. Now it's your turn. Okay. So what I'm going to have you do, now you can... You could already see that, see there's a bit of an air gap right there? Mm -hmm. So when we're ready to go put a tack there, you're actually gonna hold the hammer against it, hold that gap kind of closed. But for now, I want you to see if you can get a tack kind of going across. And when you're doing it, you're gonna look at the puddle and you want the puddle to flow um, from one to the other. And there's two different thicknesses of metal. I think the car is thicker than the piece we may have put on. It might be about the same. But I would probably concentrate on the puddle on the body and then work your way into this piece of metal, but all of it should be about three seconds long. Um, you can always go back, heat it back up if it doesn't uh, bridge across. It's hard to say until you get a feel for it, okay. especially you're not used to that welder. So sure. you're gonna wanna be about that far away, about as much stick out as there is now. Start the puddle on the body and then come in to the piece below it. And then once you get a bridge, stop. And I also, what I'll do is I'll take my thumb on my other hand and I'll hold it against the body and and the welder to kind of help. So, so if like you're you're uncomfortable and you're floating all over the place, I use my other hand to help support me on what I'm doing. And you don't have an auto darkening helmet. So the other thing too is if you're, you can't see what's going on, kind of guess where you are just pull the trigger real quick it'll light it up when you light it up you'll be able to see how far off you can adjust you where you are from there okay there you go hold that trigger. Like that. That's... You... Yeah, not bad you need to so like you did but you kind of stayed still yeah kind of move it around a little bit maybe like um a quarter inch circle. In the same spot or you want me to move? Um, do another one next to it. Okay. Does that cool off for a second? That's better. So that's pretty good. And when you're done and you let off the trigger, leave the gun in front of it. Don't let off the gun and then pull away because there's a gas that comes out of it. It's a shielding gas. Yeah. What it does is it, it keeps oxygen away from the puddle until the orange glows, it goes away and it, it'll stop those little uh, puddles that kind of go in the center of those little sinkholes. That's yeah. kind of a byproduct of that. But 
All right, why don't you do a, a couple more, and then we're going to go have you yeah, hold the hammer against it, and you're going to do the tacks on there. Okay. You welded a little too long. See how big of a glob it is? Yeah. But that's okay. It, the, the thing with welding is you're not going to know what's wrong until you make something wrong. You have to figure out what's too much, what's too little by trial and error. You, okay. you can't have somebody say, oh, you know, that's, you know, that was too much. It, it caused that. If you do too little, it, it doesn't do enough. So practice is uh, the king of this game. So, okay. Uh, why don't you do, yeah, you must well do one right there. I would say you need to kind of count to maybe count to three. You're probably going to about five or six. Okay. And count your head like one, two, three. Stop. So now you're going to need the hammer wherever that ended up. Right onto you. Okay. So you're going to take the hammer and let's get the grindy shit off of it. So you're just going to use the hammer to help hold it against there, and then you're going to try getting an attack right above it. Don't worry. Don't worry if you weld the hammer hammer to it. I've done it several <laughs> several times. Okay. It's a it's also a motion. Try to go right in the middle. See where the bulge is in the middle. Try to go for the middle of that and tack it. There you go. That's why you wanted an auto dark yeah. helmet. <laughs> Let me give you mine. Count of three. There you go. That's better. You're a little high on the, the puddle. You can see that you got most of the weld on the top. Mm -hmm. All right, so do one there and do one there. No, you, before you do that, just take the hammer and kind of tap around that weld and see if it'll feel the gap closed up on you. There you go. A little bit right there. So you can you can work you can work off your weld and then so what you're doing you're putting a very slight bend in the metal there and there and it, it just sucks it into the wall. So now you don't need to hold the hammer against it anymore. Mm -hmm. You can take care of it. Do the count of three. Okay. Come down a little bit closer to this where the seam is. There you go. That we went through. And that's probably because the, the metal is kind of rusty right yeah. there. So go next to it about a quarter inch and try doing it again. So what that is, it's just the metal so rusty next to it okay. that it's causing uh, you to, it, it's just, there's not much material there. So that's the issue. Okay. Uh, why don't you go from this side where it's thick? I'm going to have you just kind of do the same thing. I'm going to have you fill in in between these now and just do your best to try to fill them in and go to about, I don't know, go to this one. After here it gets kind of thin, I'll take care of that, but I'll have you... Do your best to try to make almost a constant bead. Okay. Stop. Probably even so. Try to take the gun and move it around a little bit more too. Okay. It's it, and that kind of depends on what the size of the the weld puddle you want to make. So if you want really tiny ones, you would stay still and just go, you know, maybe a second and a half tack, a second and a half tack. You can kind of go do that. Um, we won't go try that now. So in between each one, just go right on the seam where it is and try to hold it for like a second and a half and pull away and see if it'll give you a nice little uh, weld that just kind of bridges the two. You don't need a whole bunch of material fat on it. You're just trying to, you know, make this one attached to that. Okay. Now go right next to it. And usually what I do, I'll just like, I'll watch that one. And when the glow goes away, I won't even move the gun. I'll just go right next to it again. So like if you, when you did that one, stay there, let the glow go away, move over a little bit, do the next one until you hit that, that one and then jump over it and do the same. Okay. Good. Good. 
think it's too high. Yep. <laughs> Going uphill. <laughs> Completely missed right yeah. there. And, and again, sometimes like, um, that's why the auto darkening helmet helps. You can see yeah. where you are before you start. And it, like I said to you earlier, sometimes if you don't know where you are, just give it a, give it a little, uh, little fire and it'll light up the area for a second. You kind of tell where you need to adjust from there. Okay. Good. Probably a little too long on that one. You're trying to do like a second and a half right now. Okay. Pull the gun away a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Again, you're a little high. You want to try to come down right in the middle of that, but you're 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 doing good. Okay. I'm gonna move next to it. You don't even have to pull away. Just kind of so that way you maintain your location. It is if you don't like move back your body up. You just want to stay right there, but just let off the trigger, let it cool off, move over a quarter inch, hit it again. Go ahead. Okay. Good. You're getting it. Good. 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 Because if you go any past that, you you'll blow through. You're you're just because yeah. you're you want to try to find that line. So as you can see, you're, you're you're good. You're just a little tall on that, but you're good. See how much better they start, they're starting to line up on you. Yeah. Where over here it's kind of globby, and again that's just practice on uh, the part of you. So we're gonna have you go do the same again. So that looks pretty good. You're getting better. You can see your improvement. We're gonna have you do the exact same thing you did on top, but you're gonna do it on the bottom. You're gonna take the hammer. There's a little bit of a gap here. You're gonna go hammer that gap down. Put a tack in between there, say a tack in between there, and then just start doing the same thing. You're going to go and, you know, try to do your best to make a stack of dimes going across one single weld at a time. Don't worry about buzzing the whole thing. Also, don't worry about where we're working on the car. Don't worry about dancing around like you see a lot of guys, they're dancing from here to here to here. You're not so worried about warping on this panel. If you're doing an outside fender or, you know, bodywork on the outside, different story. But for here and for you learning, this is how we're going to go about getting your, uh, your education. Okay. I don't think I'll need to hold that. Yeah, if it hammers down, it's fine. And what you want to do, like, see, see like the gap that's on there yeah. right now? So take that one right off that weld. You could take the, you could take the hammer and knock it right down. But again, get attack there, attack there, and you probably put one on the end. Okay. Remember your count of three. You gotta have the finger on the trigger to pull the trigger. Just <laughs> pulling your finger back doesn't do pull anything. Pull my finger. <laughs> pull my finger. Good. Yeah, that one's pretty good. There you go, that one was good. You, you hear the sound difference in it yeah. too? Yeah, yeah. That's what you're looking for. Good. And then look at it. Sometimes you gotta come back, but that's good. You got smaller, but you got, it, you got both pieces attached. Yep. And it's a smaller well. And now you can kinda... So now you're going to do exactly what you did on top. I'm going to turn the camera off. I'm going to let you do your thing without me being over the top of you. Relax. Take as much time as you want. I'm also going to switch helmets with the F2 and you could use this one. Now he's got the good helmet. <laughs> Sound sounds good. See how you did. Well, that's much better. I would probably um, recommend. You see how you're kind of like you're stacked over there, but over here you're starting to get spaced apart. Yeah. Try not to 
jump so far ahead. You, you can kind of lean on the one in front of you a little bit, like you did over here. Okay. And you did over there. Just uh, what happens sometimes too? You, you have um, the the tack weld that you, you originally started with, and then you're not quite sure where you are. But you can see like you know between that one and that one. Yeah. There, there's a bit of a gap. And so what you can kind of come do? You can, you can come back, put a little tack over the top of that, and another one over the top of that. But that looks that looks good. Awesome. Yeah, that's a pointer. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to have you now work on the space that is in there. Yeah. I would probably start right on top, right where those two are touching, and work your way. See how you do. Um, you, you, some people work from the top, some from the bottom. Start where it's closed and work your way. If you find that you're having a hard tr uh, problem, g go start at the bottom. Do the exact same thing. You're going to do a weld. Then kind of, you know, catch a third of the next weld, catch the next of the third weld and work your way up. Where this gap is right here, you may find that um, you've got to slow down, let the puddle cool that's below you, and then keep working off of that one as you're working your way up. If you find that it's really blowing out on you, just stop, I'll correct it. But that's why a gap is kind of tricky, but you gotta learn, you gotta learn sometimes, right? Right. 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 The only thing with, with the top is it's a little harder to see because the gun is going to be covering where your puddle was. Uh, yeah. why, why don't you just go from the bottom up? It's usually easier to weld from the bottom. Uh, and I shouldn't say that because you're doing it a different way. You're going by tack and you're not going by a constant weld. So start at the bottom and just try building on top of those puddles Kay. that you make. Roger. Okay, what you can see is you started, you started making your welds and then this piece right here started blowing out. So try to concentrate the weld more on the right hand side where the metal is thicker and the bottom puddle and then let it cool off. If you see that this is blowing away, just stop. Let it cool down. Stop, let it cool down. When it's like that, you got to take longer pauses for the... The problem is you got too much heat, so you, you're trying to let the heat dissipate, but you still want to get the penetration going across them. So like you did on the bottom, but you just want to slow down, let the let the glow kind of go away, then you could fill. Then let the glow go away and fill it. And again, this is metal is thicker, so you kind of want to keep your heat on this side, and then eh, it kind of like wants to bridge over. But you're not concentrating the heat on that. You're concentrating the heat more on this. So, so instead of having the welder face this direction, try to have the welder more on that angle. Got okay. it. Yep. Not bad. You can kind of see where it like. Uh, you, you got it filled and uh, it's a little on the bulbousy side. You know, you could probably hit the trigger even a little bit less, but until you get used to every direction, like I said, what it does and, and what does work and doesn't work, you're not gonna, you're just not gonna know. I personally would probably, like after I do a weld like that, I would go over myself and just, I'm not gonna have you do it, but I, I would just hold the trigger down and I would just run a, a big bead over the top of the whole thing and I, I, I would just bridge the two sections of it all the way together. Maybe I'll do that for you and I'll, I'll clean up that top and where it's rusty and, and blowing through. So let me, uh, and we'll swap places a little bit and then we'll have you move on to something else. But the bottom you did really good. I like that. Cool. I like and why don't you come over the other side, I'll, I'll stand on the back. Okay. The, the switch is back here, it's a weird position. I'll turn it on and off for you. But what I would do is you kind of want to leave yourself something to hold on to mm -hmm. while you're cutting. So I, I really wouldn't just like go zip this off and not have this piece here. I'd probably do this piece, switch it along, work it this way. Mm -hmm. When you get to here, just either go straight off yeah. or if you can veer it a little bit, it's fine because you're going to have to go back up to do the, the next cut. But don't worry about trying to find that line. You're not going to be able to, to follow it. Let the saw do the cutting. You will stall the blade out if you push it too hard. It cuts fairly easy. Uh, and again, until you uh, learn. Okay. Don't stick your fingers in the blade. Yeah.
you can either back it up or just continue to cut right out. Sometimes if you make a really sharp S curve, you can't back it out. Just keep going the rest of the way and cut it out. Okay. And one last thing. I probably should have caught you. Is that when you made the pattern, right? The, it, it grows on you. So you always want to try to cut on the inside of the marker so you don't have yeah. any marker left over because mm -hmm. if not, it's going to keep kind of growing on you. So take a little bit of time, uh, tune up that little section and that little section, and we'll go from there. Okay. One other thing too, what you did was right, right there, the down on the the bottom pulley. You don't want little fragments falling off on this side of the blade because they'll go around the drum. So if all possible, you want that little piece to drop off this side. Okay. And, and that's was fine what you did. Yeah, probably what I would do before you maybe if you, you make that bend, I would, and we're going to need to do the bottom one. We should probably do the bend on the bottom, get, get that angle correct, and then we'll form this one. Yeah. And then once that one is formed, we figure out where it is, then you'll make the last bend going around the, the okay. other edge. Because that way, sometimes this gets a little funky and... Mm -hmm. What happens is this dimension will get kind of weird on you, so it'll be a little long or a little short. So if you do this one first, you're not, you can fudge it by uh, later on where that is. So sometimes you, you know you can go and you can sit and measure and try to figure out where, where you want to make a bend and all. A lot of times I'll just use my finger and the sharpie, and I'll say, okay, I need a gap. I don't know about a half inch. And you just use your finger to run along across it, and. When you're going to go bend it anyway, it's going to make a straight line, but that's just going to be your guidance point instead of you trying to have to uh, uh, come over, measure a half inch, put a mark there, put a mark there, put a straight edge in. Just use your finger for a guide. Just make sure that there's no, <laughs> you know, that you ground it first. Yeah, let's go see if we can bend ourselves another one up. I hope you guys are looking at what you should be looking at. And a lot of times too, what I'll do is I'll take a punch and I'll put two punch marks on there and they'll show up much better. I'll show you on another one. Is that the right way? I think so, right? Yes. Because that little grind coin. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's do it. I thought it was a test. <laughs> it is. The answer is yes. So I just had him mark where the bend starts and where the bend ends right there to give us a little bit of a reference point. Now you know you we're gonna go to the next the next machine tool. Go down. Alright, so this thing on one side has a frown, the other side has a smiley face. So whatever way you want to go bend that metal is how that, that mouth is gonna go do. So if you're gonna go put this in there and you hit the pedal, it's gonna make that kind of bend. I'm roughly looking at where so we want we need to be able to make that thing curve and follow that line so we want this piece of metal not to be straight across we want it to make a curve if we were doing a 90 we would just kind of cut it and bend it that's what we're gonna do on the other end but for this one we're gonna go try to make a little bit of a, a natural curve to it worried about the bottom of it not worried so much about the top of it I'm kind of looking where my my mark is and I'm, I'm eyeballing down there where it is and again we could beat it with a hammer too to, in a submission but so that's the kind of line that we have on it now we made it kick in a little bit around that corner we're gonna go see how that looks and then we'll probably put it over the end of the bench and you, you could you know again with a hammer just kind of tap on it and give it the roll to match that other part of it but that gives you a good uh, start to getting the curve going 
probably could have. You know, we could probably do is at when we lay down the bench, we'll just hammer that corner. Let's see. Let me see that for a second. Yeah. Actually, no, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty good. It's just the top isn't rolled in. I think that should be fairly good. The bottom is touching. Yeah, why don't you? The other thing is too, this whole thing's a little on the tall side. So we are either going to peen this over or we're gonna cut it back a little bit. I would say we're gonna leave that piece of metal long. We're gonna clean this edge up, but we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that later. Uh, why don't you work on forming this bend so that it tucks into this corner nicely? Mm -hmm. Pretty good. Uh, probably what you're going to find is that this edge right here, you, so you're going to put it up, it's not going to want to get drawn mm -hmm. up against it because this edge still has to get folded back. Uh, look at it, see what it looks like, and what you can do is stick it, you, you would like stick that part in the vise, clamp it down, and, and give it a little uh, kink back, but you want to get this roll kind of where you want it first. Okay. Horn on it, or you can just kind of come off the edge. I'm just going to come off the edge because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work the metal while I'm kind of rolling it on here to get that sharper band. So I, I know from that line, I need to go. And pull the metal while I'm doing it. I don't want to hit right on it, because it'll, it'll, that'll give you like lines. You kind of want to be like hit here while the angle is touching there. It allows you to get the bend. I would kind of go and fit that, and again, we still have to fold that one back, but I think that's closer to what you need. Yeah, so that looks pretty good. You got to kind of like visualize this yeah. touching there, and the angles follow each other. So now that when you go to make this bend back again, it should lay in there fairly well. You already got a Sharpie mark on there. It looks pretty good where its location is. So we're going to go make that, try to go straight with the rest of it. So. We want to have this kind of kick back, but this is going to hold you up. And you, you can put it on the other and, and kick it back, but you, you kind of want a sharp angle. So I'm just going to come in where that line is and come in down below and just put a little notch in it so it has some place to go. So again, I'm just going to kind of eyeball where that was. Let's see if I straighten that out a little. I'm just going to look down the side of it. I'm going to see if like that and that are fairly straight to each other. They look pretty good. So now we're going to go put that back on the car and see how that looks. I guess see how that looks. That looks pretty damn good, huh? That's pretty good. Yeah. All right, so again, I'm not sure if we want to roll that top or we want to take just a little bit off. I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll take a Sharpie, like I showed you, just bring it in about a 16th or so, just so like the line clears. And maybe we'll just take the flapper disc, we'll sand that down so that we catch the top of this corner. Okay. And that looks okay. We'll start the line, start the line at this line right here. And it looks like, again, I, I try to just get it visualized in my head what it looks like and then just draw it. Well, you know what I mean. So he already put a cut where the bend is going to need to go. And now he's just lining those marks up. Be careful, there's very sharp edges on this that need to be cleaned off, just so you yeah. And uh, make sure you bend the correct direction. <laughs> yes. Just, just saying. I've done it once or three. Alright. 
So you're gonna bend down towards you. Try to grab it as low as possible and just with your hands, bend it down. That stuff usually bends fairly well. Just, so you can stop right there. You see it was kind of rolly on you. Take the hammer and kind of tap that corner. But remember on the car, it's not gonna be a, a really sharp bend, but you see how it's sharper on this side than mm -hmm. it is here? Just work on tapping this down a little. And keep bending it while you're doing it. There you go. You gotta take that out, see what it looks like. Go fit that in the car one more time. Oh, it's looking pretty good. You have to... We're gonna tr fold that back out probably. You know what you're gonna do is you're gonna grind a little bit of this corner. So mark it where it's hitting the body, but you want this lip to continue into the car, but just um, whatever this gap is, is how much you need to cut away up there. And if you want, just eyeball it and like back up and then say, okay, I need about the yo much to get notched out of there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You guys, I'm almost out of room on this chip, so we're gonna be getting close to wrapping it up, but. I, I tacked that patch in for him. I'm going to have him go weld around the outside edges here. And I'll take care of the top. The top is very thin. It's blowing through. But uh, I want him to get some more practice uh, stacking welds. I got a lot of people going to comment. Normally what you do is you would drill through, do a spot weld, uh, a plug weld through the holes. Kind of like what was done down there. But uh, for practice purposes, I want him to get used to doing this. He said he's good. Let's see what we got. Not bad. First day. Yeah, I'll go buzz across the, the little, you know, a little thick on the, the downhill one, but uh, decent. Again, it's your first day. This is my first, legitimately my first day. All right, guys, we're gonna start wrapping this video up because I am just out of space. I got two minutes or so left on the chip. A little boogery, but that's to be expected. Uh, you know, you'd rather have him put more weld on it than not enough weld on it. But uh, I came over and cleaned up some of the, the little fine edges on it. And uh, we'll do the same with the grinder. Hopefully you can kind of get him more like, like that. But I think for his first time ever making metal patches or, you know, pretty much running a welder at all, I think he did really good. So uh, by the time he's done with this car, <laughs> he'll end up being a, a pro. <laughs> I got another 300 patches to go. You should be all set. Yeah. So with that, guys, I think we're gonna go wrap it up. And um, if you like this kind of video, uh, give me a heads up. Maybe we'll do more this kind of style. But uh, until then, I will see you guys on the next one. And uh, it's not for sale. last weld. Getting better. Try that. There you go. Might bottom out. <laughs> You gotta go further. I think you gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go forward about another foot.
Maybe. Bound up. <laughs> Good. <laughs>